today. From Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. This is the National Football League. Evan McPherson has this one teed up, and off we go from Nashville. No run back here on the opening kickoff, as we'll start at the 25. Here come the Titans for their first possession on offense, and leading them out in his fourth season with the team, 10th overall in the NFL, Ryan Tannehill. And one of the things that has really impressed me about Ryan Tannehill has been his perseverance. Early in his career, didn't have the success that he desired. Had some injuries that slowed his development, but he kept working at his craft, and now he's a guy that I think you can put a game on his shoulders. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. Here's Tannehill. Complete. Trying to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Now it's Tannehill. And that will be incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bengals take over first and ten. Cincinnati's offense takes the field and leading the way for the reigning AFC champs is last season's comeback player of the year, a man who needs no introduction, Joe Burrow. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and ten at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Throwing middle, and it's complete. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. Burrow on play action. Buying time to his left. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. That's the first time he's called his own number, but he's got to be overjoyed with the results. He wasn't just going to settle for a modest gain. To me, he was determined to come through with a big message to a defense that slept on him in the pocket. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Burrow's throw taken in here by Chase, and he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 27-yard line. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. We gotta like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice sustained series to begin the game, and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Here's Burrow. He's got his big tight end. That's Hurst. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. And just
just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And third and one now. Well, safe to say the passing game has found a rhythm. He's now four of four, but might need to be five of five to keep this drive going here as they face a third down. And maybe perhaps you show a running play, right? Maybe a little play action here to go ahead and let him throw the ball downfield. I wouldn't get away from him flinging it because four for four already, I think he's got a good chance of picking this one up here on third down. They will throw on first down with Burrow. And he's going to hook up with his big tight end, complete. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. Second and three with the ball sitting on the five. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Joe Mixon, a five-yard touchdown. And the Bengals get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. So that a great sequence for these guys to begin the ball game. They force the punt on one end, then come right down the field and score on the other. And that's a great example of leaning on each other and building a little momentum that way. How about the defense forcing the punt? Turns it over to the offense with confidence, and they take it downfield and score. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? But you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> now left side on the swing pass. So give him two yards there on the completion. And now third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. It'll be a gain of five. And it'll be fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. On fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on to punt. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect for another nice game for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And a fine chase on the right side, complete. Only able to gain a couple there. And now it's third and four. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us, that shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard. And the Titans are going to take possession of the football. 
Yeah, he's just trying to throw this ball into the hole in the zone, but those windows can open and close quickly, especially in the middle of the field. So if the timing's not right, we'll see interceptions like that one right there. And Henry gets the call there on first down as he pushes his way forward. A pickup of about five. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll run it again with Henry. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. It's caught over the middle. And he will have a Titans first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Give him 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. Now Tannehill. His throw incomplete. Looking for trailing Burks that time. And that'll bring up second down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. On second down, here's Henry. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Back to throw, Tannehill. Open man is Burks, and he's got him. And the Titans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Tannehill. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Robert Woods on the receiving end of that toss from Ryan Tannehill. And the Titans are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Bullock good on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. So that drive goes eight plays. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And it ends with a Robert Woods touchdown reception. The Bengals drive about to get going. They had the interception last drive, led to the tying touchdown. So 7-7 the score as they begin first and 10. And he'll get him a little space here up to the five-yard line. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. 41 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. So a little more space to operate now. First and 10 from right around the 12. Now it's Burrow. And that is taken in by Hurst. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Inside handoff to Mixon. And some room to work. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard. And the Titans are going to take possession of the football. After the interception, here's Tannehill. He's got Hooper on the short connection. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. 
We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break the tackle into a bigger game. Also, stop it. Start to up. Start to pressure receivers. Now you go over at the top, take it deep, and now you get some big shots down the field. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. You know, we might start getting some cops here in the booth. You know that one says a D in the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought the jump ball package and still come to move off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first hand. Impressive to the ready defensively for that jump ball set. Accept that penalty. A lack of discipline defensively on fourth down, and now that leads to a first and ten. After the penalty attempt, and not much, maybe a yard down to the 23. These two teams have been as inside high season better than they had in the divisional round of playoffs last year, and that is a shocker. Titans seeded number one at home coming off the bye. They were upset by the upstart Bengals 19 to 16 on a 35 degree January day in Nashville. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. Here's Tannehill. Pass complete. He's got one streaking across the field. And he will have it to his first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's Tannehill. Quick hitter here, it's complete. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Second down at three. Back to the ground now, a 10 And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10 yard line. Give them a loss of six yards, and it brings up third down. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. From the gun on third down, Tannehill flush to his right. That is caught inside the five. So eight yards on the completion there, and that's going to bring up the fourth down. Seven seven, our score after one. In the first play, it will be a field goal try. From the right hash, a bit of a tight angle. Oh, this kick is good. Down to Nixon. They'll give him four yards there. And it'll be second down. 
Uh, that's tough to play zone defense where they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, well, we, we talk about finding a soft spot. Defensively, how do you make sure they don't find a soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes. It'll pull you out of that spot they want to get into. So that's what we call them not taking the cheese. Right? Don't go for the mouse trap. That's hard to do because you see a guy cut in that, in that direction, you take the go towards it. Sometimes those cliches really have come true, don't they? When it takes 11 to play good defense, we've seen that in this ball game. I think the secondary has been singled out, though. They are in the presence of every receiver whenever the ball is thrown. And this was the other one's another incompletion. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves it with third and nine. That's it. That we always know that he is tough at run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what his offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, it's so funny if he's taking the pen and field. They may get 15 more on top of this. Charles and I just hear that they declined the declined the personal foul. Three yards, they just declined it. And I have to think that the official is thinking to himself, did I just get that correctly? Did you decline that one? All I can think of is someone on the field getting confused. Because they had to, because you're going to take the yard from that penalty each and every time. That tackle by Jeffrey Simmons. On second and seven, Burrow. From that side, caught by the tight end, Hurst. And they got this down to about the 12 yard line. When an offense reads me lips, doesn't matter where it's coming from. from. Tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because it should be an easy outlet. But all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. Now, so to speak. And here he'll get it down to the step. Five yards is this alley on first down. It brings up second and five. Now, Burrow. And they're going to get it. They bring it down to Sack back at the 16-yard line. Now, on third and long, they'll look to throw. And it's caught. And they're going to mark him down short. Maybe by about a yard, if that. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short. And it'll be fourth down. when you can get them. Not easily done. From the 29, Tannehill. And that's complete to Westbrook Akine. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now a play fake, and it's Tannehill. And this one is incomplete. 
Fans do love the long ball, don't they? And he already found his guy once. Tried to give him another chance there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Couldn't connect. But as you alluded to, he does have that touchdown from earlier, trying to keep him in the rhythm. And he'll only get this to about the 44 as they stop him short of the line to gain. So the completion good for seven there. And that's going to make it fourth down. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. And the Bengals offense getting set and ready to go again here. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time. Now, Charles, remember they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And third and eight now. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Burrow. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And that's caught inside the 35. A big play there for Cincinnati. 45 yards. Defender was right there in his shorts. Is that one of those situations as a DB where you just tip your cap and say, nice catch? Well, you're supposed to. But a true competitor, he's not tipping his cap at all. He's upset he still didn't make the play. If it's a 50-50 ball or a moment of truth, he's got to win more than his fair share of them as well. Probably especially angry because if it was incomplete, would have been fourth down. Exactly. Mixon will try the right side. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, Definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Off the play fake. Here's Burrow. Rolling to his right. Now Burrow loses the football. It's picked up by the Titans. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. 20, 10, 5, and they're going to bring this one back. A fumble return touchdown for the Titans. Now Bullock to add the extra point. It's good, and they'll take a 17-14 lead. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And they have done themselves absolutely no favors to earn a win today in this one, Charles. The turnover woes continue. On that last drive, they had that fumble that led to a touchdown. And Brandon, I would say they have a mission on this drive, and the bottom line is protect the football, just put together something that they can let the last drive go. Yeah, it was a bad play. They gave up points, but that doesn't mean it has to go that way the rest of this ball game. Do what you do best on offense and try and put the ball in the end zone yourself. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. 
And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A gain of eight there on the play, and it'll be second in a couple. They'll run it here with Piran. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gun. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. But normally you see three tight ends in a formation. You have to think to yourself, this has got to be a run. And I know as a safety, when I saw that, I took an extra step or two towards the line of scrimmage. Instead, they threw blitz coming, and down he goes. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Mixing up the middle. And a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Well, this drive, they're two for two on third down conversions, but they need seven yards here. That's the tight end, Hurst, with it. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And they go play action now, Burrow. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Here we go, here we go. They go play action with Burrow. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Hayden Hurst, a five-yard touchdown. And the Bengals are able to move back in front. This is why a lot of play callers love play action in this spot. You just want to freeze the linebackers just for a second. Then you've got a chance to get a quick pass into your tight end right behind them for a touchdown. An extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. I throw, but the catch is made. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. I you put just a little bit too much heat on that one. When you throw it to the outside, you do have to be careful because you got to keep it away from the defender. But you also have to give your own guy a chance, too. Back to the air. Tannehill on second down. It's caught by Hooper. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 42. Tannehill now to throw. And this one hauled in. Again, it's Hooper. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. To throw again on second down. Tannehill. It's complete. Burks. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third and inches. 
Tannehill. And the throw there going to be incomplete. They sure went against conventional wisdom, calling a pass on third and inches. Had to be thinking to themselves, the defense is going to overcommit against the run. Should be an easy pitch and catch. Didn't turn out that way. And that'll be off the crossbar and out. It's short. He couldn't get it there. It's no good. And that will keep this a four-point game. Well, he had that one on target. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle, however, is distance. And he nearly had that, too. But it was a crossbar that said otherwise. And that'll deny him a shot at three. Throwing now. Burrow on first down. He gets this one to Boyd. And yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. Now it's Burrow. This goes out wide for Mixon. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Looking to throw again on second down. Burrow. That's caught over the middle by Hurst. And they move this all the way down to the nine. The chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. And now Burrow going to be intercepted yet again. Picked off by Amani Hooker. And the Titans will take over here at their own 14-yard line. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Here's Tannehill. He's got Hooper on the short connection. Just a gain of a couple there. And it'll be second down. The final shot here before the break. Tannehill. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Eli Apple. And he will be out of bounds with no time remaining on what will be the final action of this first half. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new... Due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. The Bengals set to receive. They have the lead and the football to begin quarter number three. Taking it about the one. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. And he's got to be wondering what happened in that first half. Three interceptions, very uncharacteristic. And even the great ones go through phases like this, like what we just saw. And most of them, they have such a mental capacity to throw it out and essentially start over. I think that's where he's headed now. He's got his opportunity to throw it out. Let's see how he does. And a quick throw here. That's complete. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that's going to bring up third and two. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Now a carry for Piran. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Well, after an interception, last thing you want to do is go three and out, give the ball right back. They avoided that. Yeah, you definitely do not want to do that. I remember in college, I played with a really big-time player on defense. We ended up getting an interception as we passed the offense coming out. He told them, if you don't take care of this football, you have to answer to me later. You definitely want to take care of it, pick up first downs. Working with a second and three. A handoff to Mixon. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Four yards the pick up, first down. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. This is caught inside the 15. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. T. Higgins, 50 yards, as his guys are able to extend their lead. 
That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you've taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. And now he lost the football. Tannehill loses it. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game. And that's caught inside the 35. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. a universal, wasn't it? When we were kids and we played touch football, remember we get in these positions and you just say, everybody go along and hope someone would come free. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now it's Tannehill. Open man, Westbrook Akine. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that will bring up second down. Inside handoff, Henry. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and add a little. bit of power and you find a way to pick up first downs they keep it with Henry on first down just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine and the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first again it's Henry a gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Bullock's kick is good, and that'll make this an eight-point game. Two.
so the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter. Look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send a message that says, hey, we're not going away. And he returns this to the 22. The Bengals drive about to get going. The offense coming back out here. Plenty of energy ready to roll, looking to just add to what they have been doing after scoring a touchdown, Charles, their last time out. And that's a great feeling to have on the sideline, partner, knowing you just won the battle against the opposing defense. And since they came off the field, I'll guarantee you all they want to do is get back out there because they know they have the upper hand on that defense right now. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll take this up to the 30, the gain of four. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. And he's got a Bengals first down as he's got this up to the 35-yard line. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Burrow going to get this into the hands of Mixon, his running back. And yeah, they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. From the gun to give to Mixon. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Four yards the pickup, first down. Here's P. Ryan. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. From the 47, it's second and five. Burrow will throw. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. It's Roger McCreary with the pick. Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner and with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day two pick, and a lot of people thought he had first-round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You call that pick in early, and he shows why he was so coveted with that interception there. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Now Tannehill. Flushed out right. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Score that tackle for loss to the Wyoming alumnus, Logan Wilson. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. They'll try the air now with Tannehill. Forced out to his left. And now he lost the football. Tannehill loses it. Time in this game, Charles, the ball is squirted out from his hands. Luckily, his teammate was there to pounce on it. You're right. Got the lucky bounce, able to retain possession. You know, often, we often talk about the combine. Why do we measure quarterbacks' hands? Is that really a big deal? It's for situations like this. Do you have the hands big enough and strong enough to hold on to the football while being jostled? Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that'll bring up fourth down. They'll run. It's Henry. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. From the red zone now, Tannehill. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Second 10 coming up here in Nashville. Third quarter action. A handoff running left, Henry. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. 
This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Here's Tannehill. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And the Titans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. on first and goal and they'll get this from the eight to the five pick up a three but defensively they had that one pretty well figured out yeah one of the things about this play it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off a 20th carry now for derrick henry and not a whole lot there he does get a couple taking it from the five down to the three his path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Trying to punch it in with Henry. And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Derrick Henry. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Titans have come back to make it a two-point game. And he'll get into the end zone, and those two points are going to tie the game. He hits the big target for the two-point try. <laughs> Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. The Bengals drive about to get going. As this offense takes the field against CD, remember last drive, they were moving the football, but then they threw that costly interception, so we'll see if they can right the ship here on this drive. And doesn't that just sum up football? We see it all the time, don't we? The defense goes from losing the battle to making a huge play and stealing the momentum. So you know they're riding high right now, and they're ready to challenge this offense and that quarterback one more time. And we'll see if the offense is up for that challenge here as things start to get more interesting here in this second half. Second and seven. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. It'll be a pickup of four, and it winds us down to the end of the third quarter. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And the Bengals on third down, as close to automatic as you can get. Nine out of ten. Here it's third and three. They give it off here to the tight end. And he is going to have a Bengals first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. Here we go. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Burrow looking to pass. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Titans will have solid field position here as they take over at the 45-yard line. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at the 45. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Eluding the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. Henry up the middle. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. A first down carry for Henry. Down to the 42, second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. 
And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he will have a Titans first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. They'd love to get a little closer if they need to kick the field goal on fourth down. From this spot, it's 46 yards. The running back, Dontrell Hilliard, has it here. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Right side complete, that's Woods. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. Five yards remain on second down. Back to the ground now, it's Henry. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. Back to throw, Tannehill. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Bengals are going to take over at their own 11-yard line. Tie game, fourth quarter. You're already in the red zone, well in field goal range. You can't throw a pick there. And you know I want to give all the credit to the defenders, right? I mean, they made a play on the ball. But bottom line, you set up the situation perfectly. You've already got the field goal in the bag. You've got to make sure you take care of the football in that situation. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Jonah Williams, former first-round pick, the guilty party. Here's Burrow. He's got his big tight end. That's Hurst. And he will lose yardage here back to his own six. Throwing again on second down. Burrow. And that is caught. One-handed. Oh, my. He pulled it in. It's a gain of 35. I don't think we'll ever get enough of watching one-handed catches. And when they pay off, they are spectacular. But how about the times they don't pay off? And coaches go, two hands, two hands still works. <laughs> I know, but they, they go for them so often now that I'm almost starting to take them for granted. Yeah, and that's unbelievable, isn't it? Because these are sensational type plays. Especially that one with a defender right there. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Inside handoff to Mixon. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? And he is going to have a Bengals first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. They'll run it here with P. Ryan. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. That was good, tough running right up the middle, and if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. From the red zone now, here's Burrow first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. 
So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up second down. Now a carry for P. Ryan. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. This is a very impressive drive, especially when you consider where they started from to now be set up first and goal. Yeah, it's a nice running right there. That's what got them the first down. But at this point, I suggest open up your play. But he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Devin Asiasi from eight yards out. And the Bengals have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. 82 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. And his throw is incomplete. Traylon Burks, the intended receiver, but now it's third down. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. Escaping the pressure. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Trey Hendrickson able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away for pretty good yardage. At that time, they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. Now P. Ryan. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Well, this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Oh, they go with a tight end carry. And he's going to have the first down going to suck the life right out of this crowd. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Here's Pirine. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Here we go with Burrow. Dropping it off underneath, here's P. Ryan. So five yards here, five on the play. And now that sets up third and two. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense broke pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it can turn into a big game downfield 
And what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Throwing now is Joe Burrow. He's going to go for one deep left side. And this is his caught. And he's a cross on the touchdown. And the final minute that is just about to sail it. And that touchdown, Charles, with very little time remaining, and he just sucked up any energy and momentum out of the other side. Yeah, it's yeah, an incredible comeback in the bottom minute, minute to bring them back to even a great series there offensively. This is not just the window, window shot, shot. And they have to throw the rip of McPherson on for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. So this is just a man's seven plays. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception after the touchdown. McPherson on to kick this one away.
today. From Robin Light Stadium in New Jersey. The New York Jets, Jets, Jets taking on, on the Chicago, Chicago Bears. Bears. We're, We're situated about eight, eight miles west, west of New York, York City, City and at Life Stadium, Stadium in East, East Rutherford. Coming up, we've been a good matchup on attack between the Chicago Bears and the New York Jets. Jets. Yeah, 
Following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Really good stop there by the end in this 4-3 defense. And yeah, not just pass rushers anymore, are they? Those guys can use their hands, control the point of attack, shed those blockers, and go get those ball carriers. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 29-yard line. They give them 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. And this is incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. One play action, Fields. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. So give him two yards there on the completion. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Santos' kick is up and through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. Got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. 
See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And 10, it's Robinson. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuck the run. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know, there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. And he will get this to the midfield stripe, but that's not going to be enough. He's a few yards short. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Here's Braden Mann now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And now a fair catch called for, and he'll indeed take it at about the six-yard line. David Montgomery ready to take the field for the Bears' next possession. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. Well, now he's looking just to add to his totals. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll bring up second down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. To throw again on second down. Fields in trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Throwing on third down, Fields over the middle, and that's caught by Komet. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts. That's their second, so they'll have one remaining here in this second quarter. We'll be right back. Now a first down throw, Fields. And that, oh, incomplete. Daylight in front if he could have held on, but he didn't. So instead, it's second down. Here's Fields. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. So now following the sack, Fields and the Bears looking at third down and long. That's complete right side to commit. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. Third and 19, no problem as they're able to convert. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100. Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want a challenge, and they're going to get one. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And i got to say, watch it. on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Able to slither by. Just a net of 34 there, following a punt of 44 yards. And the Jets will take over first and 10. And New York set to take the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Second and eight. Here's White. Over the middle and complete to Wilson. 
And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time you wait for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Now left side on the swing pass. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like bats, and they take a lot of pride in cover. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and ten. Draw play, Carter. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On first and 10, White. Open man here is Conklin. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. It's second and seven from the nine. Looking to throw. White. This is caught. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. Back to throw. White. He's got Wilson, and that's a Jets touchdown. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Jets will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. And the kick makes it through, but flags come flying in as well. It appears we're going to get a roughing call tacked on. And that flag accepted. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. On the return, it's Tristan Ebner from his end zone. He's going to be stopped here with a penalty marker on the field. I'm not sure what this is about. So already not the best of kick returns there, but that penalty, that adds insult to injury and backs him up even closer to the goal line. Yeah, not ideal field position to begin a drive, is it? Because the extra pressure now goes on the offense. They've got to get some early yards and get away. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by D.J. Reed. And the Jets are going to take possession of the football. An unfortunate sequence there, trying to get points before intermission, but now the interception, and their opponents have a chance to possibly pad their lead. Yeah, they had an opportunity there. Trying to fit it into more, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Jaquan Brisker, and the Bears are going to have the football here at their own 18-yard line. And as we've seen, points have been precious so far, and they just threw some away on that snap. And look, let's face it, as we advance further into this game, that play will be on the minds of everyone who's watching it. They wonder if this is the turning point. Is this the spot where those points were given away? It could cost them a ball game. So we've hit halftime here at MetLife Stadium with the home team, the Jets, leading this one. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And wow, the fair catch was signaled for and taken inside the five-yard line. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. But Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. Back to throw, Fields. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. 
Oh, I thought he had that one, and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life. Instead, they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And now, boy, the ball's going to go over on downs here inside the 10-yard line. Looking to throw. White. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Partner, this is almost an unwinnable spot for a defense. They have to come right out for a first and goal trying to stop them. But let me hold on a second. Let me take that back real quick. They can win here if they force a field goal try. Still a long ways away from that happening, but that has to be what they're thinking right now. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Back to throw. White, and this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jaquan Brisker, and the Bears are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. So a big chance goes by the wayside there. A tough break on third and goal. Yeah, as a general rule, you know you're usually not going to win games with but oh, springs free. Montgomery loses it, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. And now before the ball changes hands, we're going to take a look at this just to make sure... So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. And off comes to Montgomery. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. 49 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. Well, think of it like you would a typical boxing match. The person is on his heels and absorbing blows is having a tough time. And that's what's happening to the defense right now because the offense is on his toes and punching. And there was another first down run right there. Meanwhile, Fields throw taken in by Pringle. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Well, this has certainly been a nice drive with the way they've spread the football around. Here, they even get the fullback involved in the passing game. This guy calls a lot of consternation on the defensive side. You've got to cover him, too. That makes things really difficult. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Four yards the pick up, first down. Let's face it, you always want a team full of guys who can get you first downs and big plays of all styles, but you've got to have a big man. You can just turn and hand it to, and he can be dependable in picking up first downs. Fields throw complete here to commit. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. A give. This is Montgomery. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Back to Montgomery on second down. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. And this will be caught by Mooney. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And the Bears are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. That was a round run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. 
found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Now it's Fields. Open man, he finds Komet. Touchdown, Chicago. The three-yard touchdown pass. And the Bears have taken the lead here in this third quarter. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Now the Jets offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys, had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. He finds Wilson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down.
Robinson on a give right side. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. 48 yards rushing for him now to this point. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before, they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. White's throw here into the hands of Moore. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 22-yard line. Off the bootleg, White, they'll roll him out right. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. To try again after the sack. White. That's caught by his tight end, Uzama. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. Operating from the gun. White. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. And this one is no good. He missed it. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. Down here in the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, and one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not is not the misses. It's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league. They don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. Second down and five. On the carry, it's Montgomery. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. Now it's Fields off the bootleg. That's caught by Montgomery. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. I believe I can see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room. Too close to the sideline. And for defenders, we're often taught, 11 on the field, those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game and there he picks up another first down whatever they saw going into this one they've been able to capitalize on it and no adjustment has been made to take it away and he'll be brought down at about the 23 yard line that's a staple of this offense drag route to the tight end yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch but still an effective gain nonetheless and he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? And that is caught. Touchdown Bears. Chase Claypool. A 14 yard touchdown. And the Bears will add their fourth quarter lead. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. 
Berrios going to bring this out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Looking to throw. White. It's brought in by Wilson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Back to throw. White. He'll air this one out deep for Davis. And it's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. So second down. Still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Out of the gun. It's White. Throw right side. Wilson. On the move past the 40. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 30. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Over the middle, complete. It's Smith. And the Jets are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Let's go, let's go. go. Robinson will take this one in. Touchdown, New York. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. The Jets kick team out now to boot this one away. Ebner going to elect to bring this out of the end zone here. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. They've been rolling the last couple of drives, each inning in touchdowns, so this game is flipped. They were down, now they're up with the football. We'll see how they handle it. Can we get a spy on the headset now between the head coach and offensive coordinator? Because they've been in attack mode. Had to get back into the game. Now they have the lead. Do you stay on the attack, or do you dial it back a little bit to try to protect this lead? Well, my cop-out answer would be somewhere in the middle. I think it's going to be a fine line, is it not? I think you're exactly right, but I do think if they can stay aggressive and keep them on their heels, they'll be best served that way. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Give the tackle that time to Jordan Whitehead. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Off play action, Fields. He's got a man, it's his fullback. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And that'll bring us to a third and four. Well, a clear running situation, trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit them over the top. It's a gain of four there and gives them a new set of downs. And how about that on third down? So many different directions an offense can go. Throw it out wide to the receivers, get it to their speedy running back. They changed up everything and handed it to the fullback, and he surprised them all and picked up a first down. Now a throw out to his fullback is complete. Only able to gain a couple there, and that'll make it second down. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position. It's actually utilized more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it. He's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put Yeah, there. didn't get the big yardage there. You might out of a smaller back. 
Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Well, they've gone to their fullback quite a bit. He'll get it again. And he will have the Bears first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. This is where, you know, fourth quarter, you got the lead, you give it to the big guy. Defensively kind of sucks the will out of them, doesn't it? Because they don't want to tackle him right now this late in the game. Well, you say that with accusatory tones. I mean, <laughs> you know, but you're exactly right. I know it's not something we actually want to talk about, but as a defender, four quarters worth of trying to bring people down, four quarters worth of pounding, and now late in the game, here comes that big guy coming at you, and a lot of guys are wondering where they want to come up and make that tackle at this stage of the game. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Give him a yard on the play, and he's definitely short. It'll be fourth down and a few inches. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. Yeah, boy, that's going to be close. He didn't get much at all there, but he got the first. Looked like they might have held him defensively. With the referee signals, it will be a first down. Now Montgomery. Down to about the 22 here. 107 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. The tackle by Quincy Williams. Able to stay in bounds, so the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in. And all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is the first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, break it to football, get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal as they search for what could be a game-sealing touchdown. A give to the fullback on the dive. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Kari Blossom game. A six-yard touchdown run. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game. What makes him successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays, and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. Barrios now from his end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard. But it's tough to simulate game speed in practice. And that often runs you into a penalty. He'll get that one to Carter complete. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And it'll be second down. White. And that's complete to Davis. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now White. Throw right side complete to Carter. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. 
from the 39. White, back-to-back -back catches here for Carter. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. First down now, but the clock continues to move. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. And the Bears are going to get the football here at their own 40-yard line. Obviously, Charles, this stage of the game, down two scores, they had to put the football in the air. Unfortunately, it gets picked off. And the criticism comes easily in situations like this, but you just laid it out. Look where they are on the scoreboard. Look at where the clock is in the game. He has to take a chance here and try and get the ball downfield to his receivers. Unfortunately, it was picked off. They'll try the middle with Montgomery. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. On second down, Montgomery. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. The heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. On the give, this is their fullback. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. It's a gain of four, and that should just about seal the deal. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed at intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And, Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still holds. You don't have to make wholesale changes. You just have to do a little bit better, a little cleaner. And they did that in the second half, and that led them to victory.